stages of sleep. I'm Dr. Hamilton Stubbs, and I want to talk to you today about understanding sleep. Sleep involves many parts of the brain, and I want to show you some of this. This talk is going to be available on a V blog and also my regular blog that you can find at drhamiltonstubbs.com. So here's a picture of the brain. You can see that it has the hemispheres, it has something called a brain stem, and this little back part is the cerebellum. The biggest structures involved with sleep lie deep in the center of the brain. And those are the things that I want to talk with you about. When we are trying to go to sleep, we have parts of our brain that are triggered or turned on, or you could say turned off, with the onset of sleep. The biggest component there would be in the um, pineal gland. Light comes in through our eyes, which would be the nerve tract right here, and then it goes all the way back to this little gland and tells the gland that it's getting dark or that it's getting light. And when the gland senses that it's dark, it starts to secrete melatonin. We've all heard about melatonin and the melatonin um, over the counter, even prescription melatonin. But melatonin receptors occur all over the body, and this little gland is not the only place where melatonin is secreted, but it is the main site, or this tract right in here, called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, is the major clock that controls sleep and wakefulness. The hippocampus is an area of the brain that sits right at the top of the brain stem, and it affects sleep, producing something called GABA. GABA helps quiet you down. And you can buy supplements that are GABA supplements. Some people think they don't work, but if you try those things in combination with sleep hygiene, there may be some benefit. We talked about the suprachiasmatic nucleus. It's involved for um, triggering the onset of the secretion of melatonin. Your brain stem is that part of the brain that is holding up those cerebral hemispheres. And this is like the workhorse of the brain. All kinds of nuclei and nerve tracts travel down through the brain stem and travel up through the brain stem to reach the cerebral hemispheres. The thalamus is called the relay center of the brain. It sits smack dab in the middle of the, um, of the brain stem, the upper part, and it controls deep sleep and the wave formations that come during sleep related to slow wave sleep. The basal foregrain brain is located in the front of the brain and it's, it's at the bottom part and it's responsible for sleep and wakefulness. You have your midbrain and the amygdala, amygdala. So let's go back up and look at a few of these things right here. This is the workhorse of sleep, right in this area, where you have your suprachiasmatic tract coming in to stimulate the pineal gland, which is going to secrete melatonin. And then it sets off like a cascade of events that trigger other systems to, in the brain to slow down your brainwave activity up in these hemispheres and cause you to go into the stages of sleep. The first stage of sleep is stage one called N1. It's a light, drowsy state of sleep. The hallmark is you start to uh, lose muscle control and your eyes start to roll upward. It's a Bell's phenomenon. So you may not be aware of your eyes rolling upward, but you might be aware of the muscles relaxing because sometimes we're in a meeting or even a church sermon and we start to drift off to sleep. Try to hold your head up, but you can't. That's because your muscles are relaxing and you're losing your muscle tone. Stage two sleep 
is what usually follows in one sleep. Stage two or N2 is considered the first true stage of sleep. This stage of sleep um, represents about 50% of our sleep time. You can tell if a person is in this stage only when they're in a sleep lab with electrodes on top of the brain. For example, up in this area is where we would put those electrodes. And what we're seeing is fast waves that come generated from the thal thalamus area. And these are little bursts of activity, much faster than wakefulness. And you also start to get some really sharp wide waves. The next stage of sleep is stage three. This is your deep sleep. This is also important uh, product of this area of the brain. Deep sleep is considered to be a very restorative state of sleep. This st uh, stage of sleep occurs mostly during the first half of the night. And when we go into stage three sleep, we have a lot of changes in hormones. For example, your growth hormone is more pronounced during stage three sleep. However, you do need to have growth hormone toward the end of the night because that's where you'll get your muscle repair. The other thing is your G lymphatic system, which is a cleaning system for the brain, is most active during the first half of the night during stage three sleep. REM sleep is also called dream sleep. This happens within about 90 minutes of an adult falling asleep and we get about three to five cycles of dream sleep through the night. The largest amount of dream sleep occurs in the early morning hours and dream sleep is characterized by a loss of muscle tone and rapid eye movements. If you stood beside a person in dream sleep you would actually see their eyes moving back and forth underneath their eyelids as if they were watching a movie. Dream sleep is important for our memory. All of the stages of sleep are important, but this is a little overview of the stages of sleep.